Hi, I'm Chuck. Welcome to my channel. In this video, I'll show you how to download and install Cisco Packet Tracer on your laptop and build your first network using the tool and actually send packets over the network. Cisco Packet Tracer is a free network simulation tool. Before we dive right in, please take a moment to subscribe, like and share this video. Let's get started. To download Cisco Packet Tracer, I will hop over to my browser and search for Cisco Packet Tracer. I will zoom in a little bit. Whether you use the Cisco Networking Academy or Cisco Learning Network link, you will eventually end up on the same page. Let's go with the first link. Make sure the domain is netacad.com. I will click on the link. You see we are redirected to Cisco Networking Academy page. We need to scroll down to this section that says Getting started with Cisco Packet Tracer. I will click on View Course. If you get this pop-up, just click on Skills for All. You can see the URL is now skillsforall.com. On this page, you can select another language, but for me, I will stick with English and click Get Started. On this login page, you can see we have a few options. First, if you already have an account on Skills for All portal, you can simply enter the email you used to create the account and your password and click on login. Alternatively, you can use your Google account to log in, or you can log in using your Cisco Networking Academy account if you have one. You also have an option to set up a brand new account, and that's what I will do. I will click on Setup. On this page, I will select Canada. I will also select Year of Birth and Month of Birth and click on Continue button. On this page, enter your name, email address and password. Next, you can read through and agree to the terms and conditions by checking this box. Optionally, you can click on the second checkbox to receive email about the program. After that, click on accept and continue. On this page, you can scroll down to the section that reads Download Cisco Packet Tracer. Click on this link to go to the download page. We are now on the resource hub page. If I scroll down a little bit, you can see the links to download the installation packages depending on the operating system you are using. If you are using Macbook, click on this first link. For Ubuntu Linux, click on the second link. If you are using Windows 10 or Windows 11, click on this last link. I am using Macbook for this video, so I will click on this first link for Mac OS. I will go to Finder to see the downloaded package. The file is in my download folder. I will double click on it. I will double click on this as well. If you receive this pop-up, just click open. I will click on the continue button and read the license agreement. I will click on this button to accept the license and click the continue button. I will click on install. Let's wait for the installation to run. If you are prompted for password, enter the password you used to log on to your MacBook and click OK. The installation is complete. I will click on Done button to exit the installation wizard. I will close this window. To launch Cisco Packet Tracer, I will go to my launch pad and search for Cisco Packet Tracer. I will click on the shortcut. You will get this pop-up. Since I created my account on Skills for All, I will click on it. You may receive this message that says you have successfully logged into Cisco Packet Tracer. At this point, you can close or minimize your browser. You can see the Cisco Packet Tracer is ready for use. At the bottom left corner, you can see a bunch of different devices you can use for your network. Let's build our first network. At the bottom left corner, make sure network devices is selected and click on routers. I'll click on 2901 and click in this white space to add it to the topology. To add switches to the topology, I need to click on switches. I want to use 2960 so I will click on it and then click in this white space. I will repeat the process to add a second switch. To add a PC, I need to click on end devices and click on PC and then click on this white space. I will repeat the process to add a second PC. If I click on connections, you can see different types of cables that can be used for this network. I will be using straight through cable, so I will click on this cable and then click on the router and select Gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 0. I will drag the cable down to the first switch. Click on it and select Fast Ethernet 0 slash 1. 
I'll click on the cable again and click on the router and select gigabit ethernet 0 slash 1 and drag the cable down to second switch and click on it. I'll select fast ethernet 0 slash 1. I'll click on the cable again and click on the first switch and select fast ethernet 0 slash 2 and drag the cable down to first PC and select fast ethernet 0. I will repeat the process to connect the second PC. I will click on this button to zoom in a little bit. I will also reposition the devices. Before we start configuring the router, I want to allocate IP addresses to each interface. I will click on this icon and click next to the router. Let's allocate this interface 10.1.1.1. The subnet max will be 255.255.255.0. Let me reposition the text. Let's do the same thing for the second interface. For this interface, we will use 10.1.2.1. The subnet mask will be the same. Let's also allocate IP addresses to the PCs. This one will be 10.1.1.10. Subnet mask will be the same. The default gateway will be this interface of the router, that is 10.1.1.1. Let's also allocate IP address to the second PC. It will be 10.1.2.10. .10. Subnet mask will be the same. The default gateway will be the second interface of the router. That is 10.1.2.1. I'll move the text around. To configure the router, I'll just click on it and click on the CLI tab. By default, the font is small. Before we continue, I want to increase the font size and also change the labels on the devices and make other adjustments. I will close this. At the top left corner, I will click on Cisco Packet Tracer and select Preferences. I will drag this to this side. First of all, I don't want the device model to be displayed on the topology, so I will uncheck this box. However, I want to show the port labels, so I will check this box. Next, I will click on the Font tab and use the drop down to increase the font size to 20. I also want to change the CLI background and text. I will change the text to green and the background to black. I need to scroll down and click on the apply button. I will close the window. Next, I want to rename the devices. I will click on router 0 and change the name to R1. I will rename the first switch to S1 and the second switch will be S2. I will rename the second PC to PC2 and change first PC to PC1. Let's go back and configure the router. I will click on it and click on CLI tab. You can see that we have a bigger font. You will also notice that the background has changed to black and the text to green. I will drag the window to the size and resize it. If you get this question, just type no and press enter. This sign tells us we are in user mode. If I enter question mark, you can see the list of commands that we can enter. To go to privilege exec mode, I will enter enable and press enter. Keep in mind that you don't have to type the command in full. For example, I only typed EN and pressed the tab key on my keyboard and the command was auto-completed. That's possible because there is no other command that starts with EN in this mode. You can always use the tab key on your keyboard to auto-complete the commands. To go to global config mode, I will type CONF and press the tab key and type T and press the tab button on my keyboard again. Finally, I will press the enter button. To change the hostname to R1 to reflect what we have on the topology, I will use this command hostname space R1 and press enter. You can see the hostname is now R1. Before we assign IP parameters to the interfaces, let's display the current interface configuration using this command do show IP interface brief. I will press enter. I will expand the window a little more. I added do at the beginning because we are not in privilege exec mode. You can see that IP address has not been configured for these two interfaces and the interfaces are administratively down. Let's configure the IP addresses on the interfaces. I will start with this first interface gig 0 slash 0. Interface Gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 0. I'll press enter. IP address 10.1.1.1 space 255.255.255.0. .255 .255 
I'll press enter. No shot. I'll press enter. Let's configure the second interface. I will exit from this interface and type in interface gigabit ethernet 0 slash 1 and press enter. IP address 10.1.2.1 space 255.255.255.0. I will press enter. No shutdown. I will press enter. If you look at the topology, you can see the router interface change from red to green. The switch interface status changed to amber. This is because spanning tree is converging. Give it a few seconds and it will change to green. It's now green. Back on the CLI, I will type end and hit enter. This takes us back to the privilege exec mode. Let's display the interface settings again using show IP interface brief and press enter. You can see the IP addresses have been assigned and the interface status is now up up. Compare that to the previous result we had. To set the new configuration, you can use this command copy, space, run, press tab, start, press tab, and hit enter. Hit enter again. This saves the configuration. Alternatively, you can simply type WR and press enter. WR stands for write memory. We've completed our basic configuration for the router. Let's go to the PCs. I will click on PC1. I will drag this to the side. On that config tab, I will click on settings on the left pane. I need to enter the default gateway here, which is the IP on the router interface 10.1.1.1. I will make sure that Fast Ethernet 0 is selected here. And I will click on Fast Ethernet 0 on the left pane. I will enter IP address for the PC as 10.1.1.10. The subnet mask will be 255.255.255.0. The PC config saved automatically, so I will close the page. Let's do something similar for PC2. I will click on it. I will drag this to the side. Click on config and click on settings. Enter IP address of the default gateway, which is 10.1.2.1. Make sure that the interface selected is Fast Ethernet 0 and click on Fast Ethernet 0 on the left pane. I will enter IP address of PC2 as 10.1.2.10. The subnet mask will be 255.255.255.0. I will close the page. By default, the switch interfaces are not shut down. So we don't really have to configure it before using it, especially since we are in the lab. Let's test connectivity in our lab. From PC1, I will ping the IP address configured on PC2. The packet will be sent in this direction from PC1 to switch 1 to router 1, to switch 2, and to PC2. The return traffic will flow in opposite direction. I'll click on PC1 again. I'll drag this to the side and click on desktop tab and then click on command prompt. To verify the IP address configured on PC1, I will issue this command IP config and press enter. You can see the IP address is 10.1.1.10 as intended. To ping PC2, I'll type this command ping space 10.1.2.10 and press enter. You can see that we got replies from PC2. You can as well see that we lost first ping but that's normal because address resolution protocol has to take place. Our network is up and running. I will be posting more networking videos on this channel. Let me know if there are specific topics you would like to see. Thanks for watching. I hope you found it informative. Please take a moment to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so and click the like button. Also press the bell icon to never miss any of my new videos. If you have any questions or comments, please enter them in the comment section below.